Welcome to the Summit Church Online, and thank you for joining us for this week's worship service. It is our mission to help you receive and then share the love of Jesus, or like we say it around the summit, love first. And whether you're new to church and Christianity in general, or have been following Jesus for years, we believe what you're about to experience will help you take your next steps in your journey. If you're new to the summit and have questions, contact us through our website or app. We'll be in touch to answer any questions you have. If you live within the Triad area, you're probably not far from one of our locations. We'd love for you to join us in person. And if you have young children, they will love our kids' environments designed specifically for them. Now, if you regularly attend the summit and you're just not able to be here in person this weekend, we hope this time of worship is a help to you. We look forward to seeing you when you're back. And don't forget, you can stay up to date on all the latest things around the summit and even keep up with your financial giving through our website and app. So whether you're new or a regular, thanks for joining us for this worship service. We pray that the next hour will both encourage and challenge you in your spiritual journey. Hello, Summit Church family. We are so glad that you guys are joining us today for our 4th of July online only services. And we realize that you may be watching this from a destination that's not in the triad because your family has chosen to get away for a few days. But no matter where you're joining us from today, we're super excited that you're here for this service. We've got a great one planned for you. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time today, we would love to have the chance to connect with you. On our website or our app, there is a connect with us button. You can click on that. And as soon as our staff gets back in the office this week, we'll be sure to get in touch with you about any details or to be able to pray with you or whatever you need uh, during your time with us here today. So we got a great message planned for you today. Pastor Jonathan is gonna be in week two of What's the Point? Uh, but before we get to that, we're gonna sing some songs together. So no matter where you're joining us from, choose to worship along. We got Anthony and we got Lane up here leading us in some songs together. So let's do this.
Yes, you can, yes, you can. For all my days, yes, you can. Yes, you can, yes, you can. to glorify your Show us something new. Would you speak to us in ways that, that we've never experienced before, God? We are desperate to hear from you today. We love you. Amen. Just then, Jesus had finished the story of the sower and the seeds. The crowd was confused and asked more questions. Uh, Jesus, you said something about grace in your hands, but is there grace in my hands? Like, do I need Purell? Because last time I checked, they're all out of the grocery store. It's like we're in the apocalyptic future or something. Believe me, these things are dirty. So, I'm confused. Am I the dirt? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think that's what he's talking about at all, friend. Speaking of soil, I'm about to soil myself. Can we take a break? I'm going to need a fig leaf in about two minutes with that tree over there. And now you've ruined it for all of us. So, I'm the dirt. Man, were you even here? Dude, she gonna have to do something with that baby. It's funky. Well, I thought I got it. Now I'm not so sure. What's the point? Have you ever noticed how two people can be exposed to the same environment and yet the outcome of their lives be completely different and sometimes opposite? Yeah, how, how two people can come from the same family, raised by the same parents, in the same home, exposed to the same kind of experiences and yet turn out differently. 
or two people receive the same training, the same information, get the same education, maybe even from the same schools, and yet the outcome of their career, completely different. Yeah, we see this. We see this in our families. And maybe you've seen it in your family and you see the difference in between you and your brother, or you and your sister, between siblings. Or, or it could be that you've had this experience in the sports world, on a team. The same coach, same training, run the same plays, go through the same practices week in and week out, and yet the players respond to it very differently. And we certainly see this in the education system. Now, as a pastor, I see this phenomenon happening in the setting of the church all the time. Yeah, it has a spiritual context as well. For instance, two people attend the same church, they hear the same sermon about the same topic, Time and time and time again, they have the same spiritual experience, sing the same songs, I mean, have this, go to the same events, and all of those things, they have a shared experience. Yet one of them is passionate, excited about following Jesus, and does so with commitment and faithfulness, while the other one, same environment, same spiritual experience. It's like they're like, I, I don't really get it. And to be honest, I, I really don't care. Now, in the first century, Jesus told a story, a parable, that helps us understand one of the big reasons why we experience this, one of the big reasons why this happens. It has everything to do with how we receive and apply his teachings. How we hear, receive, and then apply God's word. And this is going to require a good old-fashioned dose of self-awareness, something that is often very challenging for me and you and all of us as human beings to be able to look in the mirror and honestly see ourselves and understand what it is we're seeing and what our challenges are. So my prayer over the next few moments as we dive into this story that Jesus told is that we will have clarity as we look into the mirror Maybe some self-discovery, but certainly some self-awareness about how we hear and how we receive and ultimately how we apply his teachings, Jesus' teachings, and the word of God. Now, this story uh, has an agricultural bent to it, an agricultural context, as many of Jesus' parables did because that was their predominant culture back then was agriculture. And so... You and I still understand that today, whether or not our day jobs involve farming or the agricultural industry. It still makes sense for us today. Now, this is one of those parables, and not all of the parables are like this, but this is one of the parables that after telling the story, after telling the parable, Jesus kind of gives some explanation on the back end to help people understand and kind of get some footing on how to apply this in their lives. So this, this is fascinating stuff. And so let's just dive in. Matthew records it. Here's the story that Jesus told. He said, listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. And as he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath or where people walk. And the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock, so very shallow. There's rocks underneath, rocky soil. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon wilted under the hot sun. Since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. All of us understand what that looks like. We've seen the briars and thorns. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil. This is good soil. And they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. So this last example is what you want, what should happen, what you hope happens. And so here we go. Jesus is telling a story that involves a farmer planting seed, and there are four different kinds of soil. And the four different kinds of soil that the seeds fall onto represent four different 
outcomes. Now, again, this is one of those parables that Jesus teased out a little bit and he circled back around and explained a little bit more. For instance, in his explanation, he begins by helping people understand that the seed in this story represents the word of God, represents his word, more specifically, his teachings, the things he was teaching. And the soil represents the hearts and the minds of people like me and you in how we hear the word of God, how we hear his teachings, and how we receive those things. How the soil of our lives receives the seed of his teachings and his word. So he explains what he just said a little bit further. Jesus said the seed that fell on the footpath where people walk represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and they don't understand it. Then the evil one, which we would refer to as Satan, comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message, hear Jesus' teachings, and they immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long, they fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and then produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. So there we have four different soils and four different responses. Again, one more time. This story ultimately is about how you and I, people, us, human beings, hear and receive the truth. Jesus' teachings, or you could say the word of God. So I, I want you for the next few moments that we have together to think of, think of the sermons that you hear. Think of the Bible verses that you hear or read. Think about the spiritual truth and principles that you know come from Jesus, that you know come from the word of God. Think of how you typically respond. And again, this is going to be a bit of self-discovery and hopefully some self-awareness. So let's break this down. Let's look at these four different soils as we think about, okay, which of these best describes how I typically respond to the challenging teachings of Jesus, the challenging truth and the principles of God's word? Because that's what this is about and that's why Jesus was telling the story. The first the first soil was the soil, the seed that fell on the footpath where people walk. And Jesus described this. This is basically people who are very resistant, very resistant to, to the teachings of God's word. They, they look and they're like, I don't understand that. And I, I'm not even sure if I need it. And, and Jesus said the, the evil one, that, that Satan is involved in this part of the process. And it probably a lot of deceiving there. And, and, and getting people to kind of miss the point. And in fact, it's like our attitude that would just say, I don't need this. I, I don't need this. I hear what you're saying, preacher. I, 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 know, I know this is in the Bible. I know this is what Jesus said, but I don't, I don't think I need it. I mean, I don't understand why that that's something I should care about. So that, that's one response. And I wonder all too often how that may describe your response. Now, you may not come right out and say that. But you hear a sermon, and you see what Jesus said, and you go, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't need that. Second soil, the rocky soil. These people are opportunists, spiritually speaking, spiritual opportunists, and kind of like fair weather fans. Fair weather sports fans are sports fans that they're, they're all in it for the team as long as their team is winning, but as soon as their team goes through a difficult patch, you know, a losing streak, then you can't find them anywhere and they don't, you know, they don't wear the shirts and the jerseys and the hats. 
But as soon as they start winning again, oh yeah, that's my team, that's my team. They're fair weather fans. And so spiritually speaking, you know, the spiritual opportunists are kind of like this rocky soil. They're good until the going gets tough. And when the going gets tough, their attitude is more like, yeah, this is not working for me. I mean, I was all excited for it when it was working for me, but it's not working for me. As a pastor, I see this all the time. People get so excited and they go to church and they get in a group and they start giving and they start serving and all that because things are going good. And as soon as things start going sideways in their life and things aren't working out the way they want, then they just, where are they? They're gone and they quit. They say, yeah, this is, and they may not right, come right out and say it. Maybe you wouldn't come right out and say it, but I wonder how many times your response is like, yeah, this is just not, it's not working for me. It's, it's too hard. This teachings of Jesus is it's too unrealistic. It's just not worth it. Third soil. Again, think of yourself. The soil with the seeds that fell among thorns. These are people who are very distracted in life. They have good intentions. They really do, but let's be honest, they got a lot going on. It's the attitude that just says, you know what? I've got so much going on. I, I, I want to, yeah, I want to, but this is just not a good time. I, I hear what you're saying, pastor. Yep, and I, and I get this, and I mean to, and I want to, and I aim to, and I intend to, but this is just not a good time for me right now. I'm, this is just not a good season. Maybe at another season, when things settle down a little bit, yeah, then, then, we'll, then we'll get into church. Yeah, then, then, we'll, then we'll get in a group. Yeah, yeah, then we'll, we'll start giving. Yeah, 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 but this is just not a good season right now. This is just this stage of life we're in, you know, with the kids, and, you know, they got, we got the games, and we, we got the dance, and we got all this other stuff, and we got, we got this. This and that. You know what I'm talking about, preacher. You, you're on this stage of life that we're in. Yeah, I mean, it, it's good. I hear what you're saying. And it's awesome, but nah, it's just not. It's just, we just got just gotta go a lot, a lot going on. You know what I'm saying? Maybe later. Maybe later. In fact, I intend, I intend on it later. Very distracted. I wonder how many times your response mentally is, why well, that's good. And I'll get around to that, but right now, I just got a lot going on. I'm too busy. Maybe later, because I know it's important. And one day before I die, one day when things settle down, yeah, see, see the busyness of life chokes that out. Then the last soil is the fertile, good soil that is ready to receive the seed when it is planted so that the seed can do exactly what the seed was intended to do. This represents people who are ready. They are ready and they want it and they need it and they are ready to embrace it. They're basically saying, I'm ready to grow. Let's go. I'm ready to grow. Come on, give me what I need. And they hear it and they're like, I need that, I want that, and I am ready to learn. I'm ready to do the work. I'm ready to make the changes because I'm ready to become what God created me to become through Jesus. Again, what we're doing is we're, we're looking at the explanation Jesus gives us of why and how two people exposed to the same seed can have different outcomes and different experiences because we receive it, hear it differently and do different things with it. So I have a question just for you to consider. Which one of these best describes you? Which one of these best describes your attitude? In fact, you may just wanna pause Hit pause or, or just get your phone out and take a screenshot or, or something. So you have these. So you need to think about this later, meditate on this later. Which one of these best describes you? I mean, if you, if you were to become more self-aware and be honest with yourself, what would your conclusion be? Because it's difficult. It's difficult to be self-aware because we, we deceive ourselves so easily. So every time you hear a sermon, which one of these? Well, it depends on what the sermon's about. I get it. I get it. Every time you hear 
or that, that one verse that, that you, you hear time and time again, or that one teaching that Jesus teach, or, or that topic that comes up in the Bible. It's like, you're good with that one, you're good with that one, you're good with that one. But as soon as the preacher, the pastor, the teacher, or someone brings up this on this topic, you're like, oh. And maybe you have different responses to different topics for different reasons. Maybe you've given yourself permission to be um, selective with what parts of Jesus' teachings you receive and which parts you look at and go, yeah, I don't need it. Or yeah, I tried that thing. I tried that servant thing. It didn't work out for me because I'm just really, I got a lot going on. See, I'm, I'm real busy. I mean, for some people who don't really have good, you know, like serious day jobs for people who don't have a lot going on, don't have a lot of pressure in their life, you know, just, yeah. It must be nice. Must be nice. Must be. One day, hopefully I'll be there. But yeah, just not now. I mean, when, when, you hear, when you hear a sermon about your relationship with God, how do you respond? Your relationship with other people, how do you respond? When you hear what Jesus taught us about marriage and family, how do you respond? When you start making life decisions and choices, realizing that Jesus had a lot to say about how we make those decisions and how we consider the will of God in all of it, how do you respond? What Jesus taught about money and being a good steward of what we have been entrusted with Involving things on living less than you make and giving and sharing with others and investing into the future. When you hear those biblical principles on finance and stewardship, how do you respond? It's one of these. When you hear what Jesus talks about, when he challenges us on how to treat our enemies, people that we don't like and people who don't like us, how do you respond? Now, again, we all have our, our topics that we're like, yeah, go Jesus, you're right, amen, 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 preacher. And so it's easy for us to go, yeah, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. We all should be ready. But then there are certain topics that as soon as the scriptures turn to that or Jesus' teachings focuses on that or someone like me, a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, touches on that. You're like, eh, this is not a good time for me. I don't think I need that. Be honest. Be self-aware. And to be, to be very straightforward, the only response that any of us should really have, and it's so hard to get there sometimes, I get it, but the only response that you would want to have to anything Jesus taught, anything Jesus said, and anything that we are challenged with in following Jesus is simply, I'm ready to grow. I want my heart to be good fertile soil so that when God plants the seed of his word, his truth in my heart and in my mind, I'm ready. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to do the work. I know I need it. I'm ready to change. I am ready to embrace this and I'll make adjustments because I want to become who God created me to be through and in and because of Jesus. Just imagine if that was your response to everything Jesus taught. If your mind and heart was good and fertile soil, wasn't, you weren't so busy and distracted that it just got choked out and I mean, and you were to a point where you're just like, ah, I, I don't need that, I don't want that, that's not. And, and it wasn't the situation that as soon as life gets difficult and you, and you run into some hard times, you're like, ah, this is not working for me. Instead, what if you, imagine if just you got this right. And no matter what you're challenged with, when it comes to trusting and following Jesus, you said, I'm ready. Teach me. Let's go. Let's grow. 
Let's do this. And imagine, Summit Church, if not just you, but all of us together had fertile, good hearts and minds to receive the teachings of Jesus that we interact with on a regular basis. Imagine the difference that could be made in this community through this one church if it started here with us. Ultimately, anything positive that happens is a work of God's spirit within us and through us. But it demands that you and I be responsive because our heart and our minds are soil. And how we hear it, how we receive it, and how we apply it makes all the difference in the world. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this story that Jesus told. And, and may we make a decision to be the good and fertile soil so that when we hear your word and we hear the teachings of Jesus, we just receive it and we learn and we do the work and, and we adjust and we grow and we change and we become. Allow your spirit to work in our lives so that we become who you created us to become. Father, help us not to be resistant in any area where we're resistant, may we be self-aware. Father, help us not to just be opportunists. Only when it's going well. May we not be distracted because we're so busy and we got so much going on that we just don't have the time. Father, may we be receptive in anything you say in any way that you show us your way, may we follow. May we follow with grace and determination, being willing to confront the truth, knowing that we are recipients of your love. May we share that with others and do whatever it takes to be the kind of soil where we can grow and become as you've created us to become. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us today. And uh, we hope that the rest of your weekend as you're celebrating the 4th of July is fantastic. And we would love to invite you to join us at our physical locations next weekend uh, for week three of What's the Point, both in Oak Ridge and in Kernersville. And you can always join us online. And plus, we would love to also take a moment just to encourage you to invite people to come and experience the summit with us. You can find invite tools there on our website there under the Next Steps tab. So be sure to take advantage of those and we'll see you back next week for week three of What's the Point. See you.